Hey, what's up guys? This is Akshay from AS Learning and today we will be seeing multi-class classification using machine learning. So the problem statement we have currently is we, we will be having lots of text and from that text we need to classify it into some kind of class. So for example purpose, I've taken the data set of cuisine data and this data set is available at Kaggle. Okay, I'll share the link in the description. So the data looks something like this. We have a description of the cuisine and uh, on the basis of that description, we have a tag what that cuisine actually is. So for example, water, vegetable, oil, wheat, salt, we have a tag of Indian. Then uh, uh, let's see of Spanish. So we have something like olive oil, salt medium shrimp pepper garlic chopped so it appears like the ingredients used into that cuisine is available in the cuisine description and we have a tag of what cuisine it is whether it's indian jamaican spanish italian and we have a total of 20 categories in the cousin so it's a multi-class classification on the basis of text and this is a use case which is most frequently seen in real life uh, real life scenarios that we have data in the form of text and we need to classify them i'll give you some other other examples like spam ham whether your mail is a spam or a ham so it's a binary classification then we also have uh, sentiments like whether it's positive negative neutral then it's uh, then it also falls into multi class if you go much advanced then we have surprise anger joy anticipation so these so these are different examples of multi class classification okay so in this so in this problem statement what we'll be doing is we'll be training a model on this description and we'll be uh, building a model out of it and whenever any unknown entry on the basis of this ingredients will be received to the model our model will spit out what cousin it is okay so here we will be going with a supervised uh, approach supervised because we have label data right so supervised learning comes into play when we have label data into picture we have a label of greek provided to this entry of data we have a label of sadhanas uh, provided to sec uh, third entry of data so in this way we have labels so we'll be going with a supervised learning approach okay so let's start from the basics uh, first of all i've imported all the libraries uh, and the packages which we will be needing okay so if you don't want to uh, import these libraries every time and if you want to skip this approach i re recommend you checking my video of uh, installing pyforest so what pyforest does is it already is a collection of lots of packages and libraries and if you just install Py pyforest into your virtual environment you don't need to import these packages so you don't need to do this import re and import sklearn dot sklearn metrics dot import accuracy you can straight away use accuracy score into your code okay so you can check that video into the description of this video okay so let's start i have imported your stop words for uh, removing the stop words from this data set so what are stop words stop words are basically uh, the words which doesn't add much meaning to the description okay now in this case if we have a description like uh, we have your description like romanian latest black olive grapes now, for example, in this in this description, there is a word called the T H E or a uh, or is of. So these words don't add much value to that description, right? So we need to remove such words, and uh, these words are termed as stop words. Okay? Here I'm importing R E. Uh, it is for applying regular expressions. We will be performing some kind of uh, NLP pre-processing task on our data so for that we would be needing the regular expression package here I'm importing my data set that is cousin data.csv uh, with the help of pandas now see here uh, an interesting thing I have not imported pandas here right import pandas as PD I have not done it 
but still it is, it is importing it right strange this is happening because i have pyforest installed into my virtual environment so straight away i'm just doing pd.readcsv and it is reading the csv data okay after that i have uh, imported count vectorizer and tfid vectorizer so here i think uh, if we imported tfid transformer even that would be good or uh, so what happens here is tfid vectorizer does the combined task of uh, count vectorizer plus tfid transformer okay so even if you just import a tfid vectorizer that would do the job and lastly for uh, checking how accurate my model has been built i'm using uh, accuracy score okay you, uh, you can also go for fn or you can also go into much detail and go for uh, classification reports and go for precision recall support on class level also okay so this is the import which i've done now the first thing which you need to do is just have an understanding of what the data is so all i did is data.head it will give me the first five entries of my csv okay so these are my first five entries after that I'll check what is the count of the categories, right? So we have 20 categories here. So we have 20 classes. So this problem statement is building a model of on the basis of this cuisine description. We'll be classifying the cuisine description into 20 categories. Okay. And uh, let's see what categories they are. So I've just did a simple unique and these are those 20 categories so these are the different flavor of cuisines like we all know indian food chinese food we also have russian moroccan this is something kajwan kariole i don't know what it is japanese thai and etc okay now the first thing which we do is we check for nulls and if we have nulls then we either uh, impute them or if they are less then we can drop them also so we need to take a call on the nulls so as you can see we have zero nulls here we have no nulls so one problem is sorted now the next thing is dropping duplicates there's no point in keeping duplicates into your uh, data set because uh, it, it is not a good practice of showing the same data to your model more than one times uh, it leads to biases and variances discrepancies so it is always nice if you have if you show one single row of the data only once to the model even if you show the same data many number of times the model won't learn right it will be the same input to it like 2 plus 2 4 2 plus 2 4 2 plus 2 4 it would be the same thing right so i've done data dot shape so we have around thirty nine thousand seven hundred and seventy four rows uh, with two columns then i did a drop duplicates so and i've done in place true so the it would be happening in the same object itself so as you can see some amount of rows have been removed around like 100 yeah around 97 i think so yeah so 97 rows have been removed so we had 97 duplicate rows into our data set now next uh, go ahead with the pre-processing of the text so let's have an understanding of uh, how many words are present in the cuisine description okay so i have applied a lambda function and uh, i have splitted the cuisine description on spaces and taking the sum of it so we have around uh, eight lakh six six thousand words okay now what i what i'll be doing is uh, we'll be removing the stop words out of those eight lakhs uh, eight lakhs six thousand words and we'll be also removing uh, some unwanted uh, unwanted special characters okay so we'll be remo we'll be removing the special characters then uh, we'll be also removing some uh, unwanted symbols which uh, which generally occur into your data set because of uh, uh, different data sources some encoding problems and all okay so here I am. Uh, I've written the function def clean text, and I've lowered my text. I am removing the special ca characters. I am actually substituting those special characters, like 
these are those characters if they are present so i am replacing those characters with spaces okay then uh, i am also replacing some extra symbols so any alpha new so if any so if any character doesn't appears in this in this set apart from this if you have any other thing it will get replaced with spaces okay so no it will be replaced with nothing so we don't even have spaces yet it will be replaced with nothing and last but not least we are removing the stop words like if the and those words which does not add much value to the model building and uh, if we check now around 3000 words have been removed so we are left with 8000 sorry 8 lakhs and uh, 6 uh, 3000 words okay now we'll be building a model on these words okay now the basic thing when we build a model is we train the model on on the training set and we test it on the test set right but for that you need to split the data into train and test so i have went ahead with the standard practices i have kept the test size as a, a 0 0.3 and i have kept the train size as 0 0.7 okay and i have split the data into x train and y train okay if we also check the shape of it so as you can see we have around 27000 rows into train and around 11000 rows into test okay now i'll be applying different kind of models here and build a and a build a multi class classification on it so in this tutorial uh, we'll be seeing only machine learning approaches right uh, machine learning approaches with the uh, nlp uh, text to numeric conversion with the help of tfid vectorizers okay now uh, we can also go advanced we can uh, also go with doc to vec word to vec then uh, we can also use uh, keras and all so i'll be making a video on it but uh, for that uh, you will have to stay tuned on the channel and uh, maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow uh, i'll be uploading uh, the same uh, problem statement same data with some advanced techniques of uh, uh, keras and doc to vec and word to vec okay so currently uh, in this tutorial we'll be doing multi-class classification with the help of machine learning only like we'll be restricting ourselves to uh, exeboost max to max exeboost we won't be going towards the neural network kind of stuff okay stay tuned for that also so i'll be uploading uh, the similar problem statement with neural network kind of a thing okay and uh, so the first we'll start with logistic regression right because it's a classification problem right so what i did is i have imported logistic regression we'll be building a pipeline so we'll be building a pipeline for our model and uh, what i've done here is uh, i have uh, yes in my first step in my pipeline is count vectorizer then it is tfid transformer and last but not least is my logistic regression okay now let's understand what this count vectorizer does and what it is okay so it will be easier if we just go to the documentation only count vectorizer documentation now yeah this is also nice tfid vectorizer yeah so let's keep it simple and uh, let's not get into much complexities in simple if i tell you what count vectorizer does is count vectorizer converts a collection of text document to a matrix of token counts okay now matlab for example if we have lots of words now as we noted we have around 8 lakh to 3000 words so what it will do is it will be creating a sparse matrix it will be creating a sparse matrix for occurrences of every word okay so it it uses the scipy sparse csr matrix and uh, on the basis of the count of the words it will be creating a sparse matrix so for example in that 8 lakh 3000 words uh, for example uh, grapes appear around 2000 times for example then 2000 will be the number associated with the word of grapes okay so in this way every uh, every word will have a number associated and that number will be coming from the frequency of that word into that entire document into the entire corpus corpus is a better word okay now that is what count vectorizer will, will do for you 
Now on top of it, what I've done is on, on that count, I've applied a TFID, TFIDF transformer. Now what is TFIDF? Now TFIDF is a combined score which is popularly used for converting the uh, textual uh, things into numeric form. Okay, TF stands for term frequency and, and IDF stands for inverse document frequency. Now what is TF? Let's, let's keep it simple. TF is nothing but uh, the number of times a typical word occur, occur into a document. That will be your term frequency. Okay, and what is IDF? Now IDF is uh, the number of documents present divided by the number of documents in which that typical word is present and then we take a log of it. So that, so that will be your IDF and we multiply both these scores and it combines give us TF-IDF that is TF-IDF. I'll see if we have the formula here. Uh, I'll show you the formula. Uh, Yeah, so I think so. No, not this one. Uh, so these are the different parameters which are present into TFIDF and uh, I highly recommend you check this documentation for more insights. Okay. Uh, let me see the formula if we can get a hunch of it quickly. If not, yeah, this is the yeah, this is how TF IDF is defined. So we have a TF coming and we have IDF coming and we take a multiplication of both these things and and, 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 and it gives us a score of TF IDF for each respective word. So for grapes, we will have a TF IDF score. Okay, and this is how IDF is calculated. We take a log, we take a log of the number of documents that is N upon the number of documents in which the word has, has occurred. Okay, so in this way, we calculate the TF-IDF score. So for each word, we'll be having a TF-IDF score. For grapes, we'll be having a TF-IDF score. Then for example, for bark, we'll be having a TF-IDF score. For chilies, we'll be having a TF-IDF score. For everything, we'll be having a TF-IDF score. So by this two transformation, my entire textual data has been converted into numeric, okay? Because my CPUs and my GPUs only and only understand numbers. They, did, they don't understand text, right? So we need to convert this text into numeric form. Okay, then and on the basis of this numeric output, which I have been, which I would get from these two transformations, these two NLP transformations, I'll be applying a logistic regression on it. Okay, so this is my entire pipeline. Okay, so my data will come, first count vectorizer will happen, after that TFID of transformer, and after that logistic regression. Okay, now if you want to uh, skip these two steps, two steps and make it one, so you can straight away use TFIDF vectorizer that's it so tfid vectorizer does both these things okay now once my pipeline is ready what i'll do is i'll fit i'll fit my pipeline to my training data okay my x train and y train will go uh, into fitting the data and after that what i'll be doing is i'll be predicting the scores of my x test okay and uh, after that whatever scores i'll be receiving i'll be checking the accuracy of it okay so this this was my pipeline i first use convectorizer then tfid of transformer then then logistic regression after that i train my model so this is where the training is happening uh lr dot fit dot x train y train this is where my training is happening and after that once the model is trained i am predicting the scores of the x test which were uh already segregated by me into the testing data and once those scores are once those tags I've received, after that, I'm just calculating the accuracy of what is the accuracy of my model. So it will tell me how accurate my model is. Okay. And as you can see, logistic regression gives me a pretty good accuracy. It is around 78% and it is really nice as per industry standards. Okay. Now, if we, uh, if we go for some other classifiers, now it's, if we go with naive bias classifier, okay, I have not defined the pipeline here. This might take time, so okay, yeah. So, so, so similarly, I have applied a naive bias classifier and I've also applied XGBoost. Okay, so I, I won't show you uh, applying XGBoost because it takes a lot of time for uh, training XGBoost model, 
but uh, if you can see on this data set navy has given me accuracy of uh, 68.82 that is less than logistic regression and even XGBoost uh, gave me accuracy of 77.83 okay so the highest which we have got right now is from logistic regression simple logistic regression okay and uh, if you want to increase in model uh, increase the accuracy then we have other approaches of doc talk to vec uh, word to vec and you can definitely go for a uh, neural networks also so those approaches will be discussed in the second part with, uh, which will be with the video name of uh, multi class uh, classification using deep learning and word to vec and doc to vec so stay tuned for that video and maybe within two three days i'll be uploading that too okay so this was it building a multi-class classification uh, model right from scratch from the data and we use machine learning here so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with all your machine learning python and uh, uh, ai data science enthusiast and uh, stay tuned for as learning for more such amazing uh, data science and technology videos take care peace out Thank <laughs> you.